reproductive isolation. So uh, this is just when members of a population can't mate. There are many different reasons for that, and we'll talk about why. But this leads to speciation, formation of a new species. So speciation, the formation of a new species. This is because of reproductive isolation, meaning they are isolated from one another. They cannot mate. They cannot um, sexually reproduce for one reason or another. This means there is no gene flow. There's no movement of alleles or genes between populations. That means, you know, like if we think about two separate species, let's think about maybe like a deer and a pig. They are reproductively isolated. They can't mate together, even if they were um, in the same area. So the genes aren't flowing. There's not any alleles mixed. Um, we're not having some kind of deer-pig hybrid. Um, they're just two different. And so we have two different species, speciation. So a couple different types. We have temporal isolation, behavioral isolation, and geographic isolation. Temporal isolation, temporal meaning like time. Uh, this is just the fact that the organisms might mate at different times of the year or different times of the day. And they just aren't there to mate. So even for instance, these two frogs down here, they're both frogs, they're both similar, and they probably could make uh, a new species if they were together. But one of them, the one on the left, breeds kind of like in early winter, January to March, and the one on the right breeds uh, late March to May. So they, when they are actually sexually reproducing, they are not doing it at the same time. So they have formed different species. So temporal, meaning time. Behavioral, this is just uh, the behavior of the organism. So maybe the uh, courtship or mating rituals prevents mating. Um, a, big, a common one of this is birds and their songs. So lots of male birds um, will sing in order to attract a mate, or they will do displays like you think about a peacock with their big uh, tail feathers up in the air. Those are all to attract mates. And if you think about maybe like a cardinal singing to a peacock, peacock's not going to respond to that at all. That's just not attractive to that female peacock, so they wouldn't mate. And then same way, if a male peacock flaunted all those big old feathers and tried to do it to a female cardinal, um, they just wouldn't even know what to do with that. They wouldn't be attractive, attracted and they wouldn't mate. So behaviors can differ as well. Then finally, just geographic isolation. So they're truly separated by something. So that could be like two different islands or an island off the mainland. There's a big separation of water in between them. Maybe there's something in the middle like um, a river or there is like a volcano or uh, like things on different sides of the Grand Canyon or at the top of the Grand Canyon versus the bottom of the Grand Canyon. They're separated. They can't get there. Um, or maybe it's even just the fact with these flowers, maybe the ones in the middle are in more fertile soil while the ones on the outside are in infertile soil. So a few more things in this, this lecture. Uh, genetic drift. This is just when allele frequencies are changed due to chance. So totally just random thing that happens. There's no natural selection. There's no um, choice involved in this. It is all chance. This occurs in small populations and it causes the loss of genetic diversity. So if this were to occur, the populations would be all pretty similar genetically, which is not a good thing. Two types, founder's effect and the bottleneck effect. So founder effect, this is when a few individuals start a new population um, somewhere else. So this is often seen on islands. We have maybe like the mainland here. We got these bugs that are red and yellow. And then a few of them get blown away in a storm and land on this island. 
and they just happen to all be red. It's all by chance. This is genetic drift, so it's all by chance. And so now all of these bugs on the island are going to be red because that's what just happened to be blown over. So when two red ones have a baby, then they'd have more red and more red and more red and more red till a mutation occurs. And so the ones on the mainland would be pretty evenly red and yellow, but the ones on this island, just by chance, from the founder's effect, they would all be this kind of red color. Then we have bottleneck. Think about bottleneck. This is when some kind of destructive event occurs and leaves the population really small. Um, and it's kind of just whatever happens to be left over. Hunting is a big one. Any natural disasters are bottleneck effects. And it just reduces the size of the population. So here we have this full bottle of populations, hundreds and hundreds of alleles or individuals in here. And maybe overhunting happened, maybe a wildfire happened, and it happened to kill, just by chance, a bunch of, a bunch of them, like 95% of them. So we're left with just a few left. And so maybe there's only a few yellows and not, and a ton of reds. So the new population would be way more reds than yellows, just by chance. This could happen, could have happened another time with an earthquake and it killed just by chance, uh, all, almost all the red ones and it's almost all yellows. And then we get reversed here. So it'd be almost all yellow and very few red. So it's all a chance. So that's bottleneck.